Please sign here. This document will be effective immediately upon signing, and you two may exit the Fortress of Meripede via the regular channels. It's been so long since we've been to the surface! was just now. Good to see you two. 
Is there something you wish to see me about? Yeah! What was with that earthquake just now? Ah, that. The tremor didn't originate from the seafloor. In fact, it seems it came from the surface. Over the years of serving as the warden here, I have developed a sense for distinguishing between what occurs on the surface and what occurs underwater. Besides, the seal that Monsieur Neuvillette set in place won't fail so easily. So, the fortress is okay? If you recall our last incident, if there really were a problem, there would be crowds of inmates in a panic right now. Huh, you've got a point. Okay, seems we need to get back up to the surface and ask about what happened. Uh, by the way, do you know what day it is today? Hmm, I believe today is this month's pipe cleaning day. Wait, seriously? Ah, yes. Have you completed your release papers? Yep. Uh, it's you two. Uh, are you leaving now? That's right! Today is our last day in prison! But now that Paimon says that, it doesn't feel like we were confined here. It's actually been pretty nice! Oh yeah, Paimon feels fond of this place now! Well, then be sure to come back and visit. I'll miss you. If you've signed the release papers, then you're free to go. The guards will escort you out. You're not going to see us off? <laughs> I knew you'd ask. All right, sure. Let's go. Well, you actually agreed. Uh, no worries, you must be busy. Paima was just joking. Ah, so you do have a polite side, I see. <laughs> After being down here for so long, I imagine you must feel like you're lacking companionship. Shall I come along, too? Yeah! Don't worry, we'll come back to see you. Uh, Paimon really likes the cafeteria here. The chefs sure do know how to make good grub! I hope you won't be here as convicts the next time I see you. We'll do our best to stay out of trouble! Well, it seems our work in the Fortress of Miramine is finished! That's the end of another chapter in our journey! And since Nervalet was the one who asked us to come here, we should probably go report to him now. Next up, the Palais Marmonia! You're going to see Monsieur Nervalet? <laughs> Please pass on our kind regards. I'm sure just your regards will do, no? Hmm, I believe it would be the polite thing to do. You're right. I've heard the Palais has been terribly busy these days. Tell him that I hope he hasn't been overwhelmed by the recent string of troubles.
today. Halt! Huh? Oh, it's you two. <laughs> Apologies. Monsieur Nirvillet did say you'd be welcome at any time. Excuse me. Would you mind helping me take a look at this report? I'll be right there. Sorry, I've got my hands full here. You can see yourselves in. Everyone's so busy. Seems a lot has been happening. Hello. You've come at the right time, but you'll have to wait for just a moment, as there are some urgent matters I must tend to first. In the meantime, please, have a seat. If you'd like to have something to drink, let the Melusine outside know. That's all right. We just ate. Very well, then. Let's take a break over there while we wait for him to finish his work. All right. I should wrap things up for now. Are you done with your work? Yes, sorry to keep you waiting. Today should be the day you were released from the Fortress of Meripede. And it appears that you've managed to complete all the release paperwork. That's right! And we came here to see you right away! Hmm... a massive whale... Do you have any idea what that might be? Judging from your description, that cannot have occurred in any ordinary waters, but rather something like the Primordial Sea. A whale of that size and shape cannot usually be found in the waters of Tevat. Therefore, we can only assume that Child is presently immersed in Primordial Seawater. Most people wouldn't be capable of entering in the first place. I'm not completely sure how he could have gotten there myself. Yes? What is it? Ah, oh, right! Paimon felt it too! We asked the Duke and he said it wasn't from underwater, so we figured you might know something about it. It turns out that I have just received a report about this particular matter. In fact, that's exactly what I was busy with a moment ago. The source of the tremor was here on the surface, near Poisson. After the shaking stopped, the water levels in the Poisson area rose at an alarming rate. The water levels rose? Oh no! What about all the people there? Fortunately, the water levels only rose for a short period of time, and have already returned to normal now. However, I still have a bad feeling about the whole phenomenon. If the change in water levels is connected with the leaking primordial seawater, then the situation in Poisson may be much worse than it appears. Navia should be in Poisson, right? We need to go check on her! I would also like to go there as soon as possible, but I'm afraid I can't leave just yet. We must immediately formulate disaster prevention plans for the surrounding coastal areas to avoid potential catastrophes. I'll have to ask you two to go to Poisson first. I'll meet you there to check on the situation once I finish things here. There's no time to lose! Let's get going! Please be careful.
Princess should be around here, right? We need to make sure she's still... Uh, Hyma means we need to check on her. your balance all right just hurry I'm not young anymore how will I survive on my own <laughs> my Desiree oh, he looks pretty sad my leg! My leg! How could this have happened? It hurts! Just hang in there. Help is on the way. You can hold my hand if it makes you feel better. You're here. We heard there was a situation in Poisson, so we came as quickly as we could. Yes. As you can see, the water level suddenly rose. It caused quite the disturbance, in fact. Demoiselle! There was a wounded resident next to a building southeast of here. We've already transported him to safety, but we've run out of medical supplies. He's wounded? How badly? He fell, so it's probably a broken leg. He's pretty shaken up. When the water level rose, he desperately climbed up to the roof. Once the water receded and he saw the ground, he became terrified and eventually... He jumped down then. Find the leader of Squad 1 and tell him to take the wounded resident to see a doctor. He should know where to go. Understood. I'll take over his search and rescue mission in the meantime. All right, you'll be in charge. I'm sorry. Where were we? Uh, this situation in Poisson? Ah, uh, right. Allow me to explain. A little earlier, we suddenly heard a loud noise. At first, everyone thought that something might have exploded in the waterways. But before we knew it, water started pouring out from everywhere. The rushing water seemed a little odd, almost like the unique color of primordial seawater. Some people didn't realize the danger and thought it was just ordinary water, leaking from somewhere. Everyone on the street who happened to be close to the water didn't have a chance to escape. 
As the water levels rose, they suddenly disappeared. They were all dissolved. Those who realized what was happening started to flee in a panic, desperately trying to get to higher ground. Many were injured in the stampede, and some... some people fell from significant heights. The Spina di Rosula initiated rescue operations as quickly as possible, but there have been... a lot of casualties. Fortunately, the water began to recede after some time, and the chaos came to an end. The water that flooded the area contained primordial seawater, so the lower levels of Poisson are still hazardous. To ensure everyone's safety, I've asked the people there to leave as soon as possible. No one knows if this could happen again. All we can do for now is try our best to help evacuate the residents. We still haven't completed the headcount, but we'll have some numbers soon. How awful! And all of this just came out of nowhere! It was quite frightening indeed. I only wish that everything that just happened was a bad dream. Is there any way we can help, Navia? Thank you for being so willing to help in a moment of crisis like this. You don't know how much it means to me. I really can't express how grateful I am. Don't say that, Navia. That's what friends are for. <sighs> Demoiselle, we've got a situation here. Uh, I'll be right there. Sorry, I need to go for now. And off she goes! Seems it might be a while before she can take a break. Okay, the wounded are being tended to, and we finished a preliminary headcount. More support has just arrived, so... I suppose I finally have a moment to focus on my own matters. Of course, we should remain ready for anything, and continue doing our best to rescue others. I'll be sure to have everyone at the Spina di Rosula ready to render assistance. Traveler, Paimon, would you two accompany me to my father's grave for a moment? Huh? Right now? Thank you. Of people here, huh? Well, given the time of day and the whole situation in Poisson, Paimon doesn't think there'd be a ton of people here visiting graves. Right. That's how things are now. The living are so exhausted that they've no strength to spare any words for the dead. Um, Navia? <laughs> Navia, what's wrong? Sorry. I... I just... Malus and Silver... They won't ever come back here again. What should I do, Papa? 
Huh? What happened to them? Everyone agreed on the rescue plan, but still... I was the one who initiated it. They were helping evacuate the residents, but they couldn't leave in time. And... And they were caught in the seawater. <laughs> what, what should we do? I've known them for so long. And I know they weren't afraid. But... But... I could at least hold a funeral for my father. And I know where he rests. But as for Malus and Silver, they're just... gone. I just can't... Everything looks so clean after it rains. Even the gravestones. I didn't expect that you'd enjoy a glass of red wine in front of Master Callus' grave. I can understand. Besides, the scenery here isn't half bad. See, it's not just me. I always want to bring something when I visit Papa. Perhaps we might even have a picnic. He wouldn't be angry, would he? Ah, how could Master ever be upset with you, Demoiselle? Yet, the cemetery is the home of those who have passed, is it not? Everyone ends up here sooner or later, no matter who you are. Buying yourself a plot in advance, are you? <laughs> no need yet. But when I do, I hope you'll let me be buried beside Master Callus, Demoiselle. Hey, stop joking around. I'm quite serious. That way, it will save us both the trip to see each other whenever you visit your father's grave. That makes sense. In that case, could I be buried on his other side? After all, besides you, Demoiselle, the two of us could certainly be considered Master's closest companions, no? Personally, I believe we fill those shoes just fine. <laughs> Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? Seriously? All right, all right. I'll remember your requests. But I'd really prefer not to talk about this stuff. And what do you mean by saving me a trip? I'd make the journey even if I had to visit you two somewhere else. I'd promise to let them rest in peace here. But here I am breaking that promise. <sighs> I'm sorry for letting you see me in a mess like this. I don't usually cry, really. Paimon doesn't know how to help you feel better. But... Well... She understands how you feel. I had always thought I could make my wishes come true. But... Now that I think about it... That never solely relied on me. Many things can only be accomplished with someone else's help. Malus and Silver have helped me... So much. But by contrast, I could do nothing for them. I'm so sorry. You can spend as much time as you need here, Navia. We'll stay with you. <sighs> Thank you. Right now, you don't know how much that means. By the way, you can have a look at this. It's a list of victims from the incident that took place here. Obana, Khan, Burnett... Giverny, Francine, Karina, Daisy Ray, Joanville, Julianne, Esson, as well as Malus and Silver. So, everyone else is safe. But still... It's okay. I, I know what you're thinking. And you're right. We lost Malus and Silver, but we were able to save more than we anticipated. The overall outcome indicates that the cost was worth it. Right! Don't think that way, Navia. One person might be saved at the expense of another, sure, but that isn't something we should ever consider a trade. 
Malus and Silver were not the price for saving anyone. They're heroes! You're right. Thank you, Paimon. What you said just now was pretty amazing, actually. I'll remember your words. Oh! Uh... Really? Seems you've become more eloquent in the time since we last met. Uh... The Knave? What are you doing here? Ah. Is everything going well on your side? Yes. My people are carrying out the mission according to your request. All the residents of Poisson have been evacuated, and we are preparing to relocate them to higher ground. As for these supplies, we have everything taken care of. There is no need to worry. Thank you. Very much. Wait. Do you two know each other? We just met recently. Right, Miss Navia? Hmm. Usually, I would call this a coincidental encounter. But that doesn't quite fit this time. Besides, it never even crossed my mind that a Fatui Harbinger would come looking for me. Thanks to the Knave, Spina di Rosula received generous support from the Fatui, which allowed us to complete the rescue and evacuation work so quickly. Mutual aid is essential to fostering positive developments. We were already in the area, in any case, so it was nothing. That said, I must say that you're a lot sharper than you let on. I'm sure you understand what I mean. I apologize for all the ways in which I tested you previously. We've never worked with a Fatui before, and it's extremely important for us to know who we're working with. My subordinates have reported that Fatui soldiers have been observing water levels and taking headcounts in various locations. I hear that they've also prepared a large amount of emergency supplies. I'm quite surprised. This is nothing to brag about, nor do I intend to. It is simply the way of powerful organizations to act forcefully, whether they are doing good or ill. You've witnessed that firsthand, in any case. As I've told this traveler before, I know of the prophecy, and I intend to prevent the impending disaster. Lending your organization a hand was a natural first step in accomplishing that. As such, do not be troubled by this token of our sincerity. Perhaps one day, you'll also be able to help me in the same way. Without your help, there would have been many more casualties. I won't forget your kindness. Furthermore, I sincerely regret what happened to Malus and Silver. I only wish that my people could have arrived a little earlier to prevent this from happening. Don't say that. You and your subordinates did everything you could. As Paimon said, Malus and Silver didn't choose to sacrifice themselves for any specific person. And they weren't the price paid for other salvation. They chose to become heroes themselves. I've never liked hearing people put it that way. It's like trying to relieve pain by saying some noble-sounding words. But right now, there's nothing more suitable. They really did become heroes. You're right. I'm sorry for your loss, Miss Navia. Water is life to Fontaine's people, and it also spells disaster. It's no wonder that people always say that prophecies represent fate. Fortunately, I've never been one for such opinions. So, you're one who will try to change fate then? Of course. That is why I'm going to Hotel Bouffe de Terre. I still have some things to take care of, and the children need my attention. By the way, Traveler, Paimon, one more thing. Alright, then we'll just... Uh... Huh? This isn't right. Paimon thought you would ask us to walk with you for a moment so you could tell us something in private. That is a clever and useful conversation technique, which I do like to use when necessary. But there's no need today. It would not hurt to have Miss Navia listening in. Traveler, I'm sure you remember that I said we could work together when we had the chance. You and I both know that there may be issues with the Primordial Sea. Previously, it was the Fortress of Meripede Sluicegate, and this time it was the water levels in Poisson. These are both signals. Indeed. Allow me to share the latest intel I've received from the House of the Hearth's intelligence network with you. 
During some recent investigations, a child claimed to have discovered some ruins near Poisson. The ruins date back to ancient times, and seem to be worth investigating in many ways. Judging by the dating of the ruins, they may be related to the prophecy and the coming crisis. The situation is becoming more urgent, so any pertinent information will prove extremely precious. My people initially came to prepare for ruin exploration. Unexpectedly, this disaster struck. And at present, we're all busy prioritizing the rescue effort. So that's why the Fatui were already in Poisson. I wanted to take the children along, but unfortunately, Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet have all been dispatched to higher ground to assist affected residents. Linny told me that outside of the house, the person they trust most is you. Which is why I want to give you this task. The House of the Hearths members see each other as family, but Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet said that they also see you as such even though you are not from the house. I'm sure you already understand how earnest they consider their friendship with you to be. Oh! That somehow makes Paimon feel kinda happy! The intel I just shared about the ruins could fetch a high price. Oh, but since the children consider you family, it's only natural that I freely share it with you. Got it! So all we gotta do is go to some ruins, right? Pfft, we can handle that! Excuse me, but may I tag along? You wish to join, Miss Navia? But are you sure you're up to exploring some ruins? You need to rest! Well, I'm sad, yes. But I can't just go back and plop myself into a chair by the roadside and do nothing. There's no point in being depressed while we still have a disaster on our hands. As my father's successor, I must live up to the hopes he had in me. Besides, I'm also doing this for myself. I need something... a distraction... to keep my mind off Malus and Silver. Since you put it that way, I have no objections. What do you say, Traveler? Alright, the ruins are to the south of Poisson. Here's the map. Okay, the three of us will handle it. Let's pack up and get going! ruins the knave was talking about? Oh, talk about old! They seem to be pretty ancient, all right. Let's go in and have a look. Just be careful.
This place has also been contaminated by primordial seawater. Yeah. And a lot of it, too. A Fontanian would most likely dissolve the moment they fell in. Right! You can't go down if there's primordial seawater. It's too dangerous, and it won't be any help for you to just stay here. Uh, don't get by my wrong. We're not saying you're useless. It's... Just that... No, you're right. I can't do anything in this situation. I'll leave this to you. That complicates things. Maybe the only way left is forward. In that case, do you want to wait for us here? Mm, the water levels here are unstable. And there's a chance the water will rise. So staying here wouldn't be safe either. I'll go together with you. Perhaps we'll find the exit just up ahead. All right. Come with us for now then, but please be careful. <sighs> oh no, it's a dead end! Hmm. Let's try climbing over from the side.
<coughs> Demoiselle. Huh? Demoiselle, what are you doing here by yourself? Would you be standing here till dark if I hadn't come to get you? Maybe she just wants some time to herself, Malus. Hmm? Oh. Uh, was I... Was I sleeping? Yes, it would appear so. Uh, I must be tired. That's quite possible. However, you were the one that suggested we go out for a walk. Oh, right. I nearly forgot. <sighs> it must have slipped my mind when I dozed off. I haven't had a nap today yet. Uh, have I? This is a familiar feeling, yet... Something's a little strange. Is something the matter, demoiselle? Oh, uh, no. No, I'm fine. I was just trying to recall why we came out for a walk. Do you remember Mr. Giverny? He'd requested our help before with foreign merchants who had a debt dispute with him, and we'd resolved the matter not long ago. We were headed to see how things were going with him at the moment. Ah, oh, right. Yes. I remember now. Oh? Miss Navia? Ah, Mr. Malus. And Mr. Silver, too. <laughs> it's good to see all of you. Uh, how have you been? I've been great. Thanks to your help, those bothersome merchants finally realized that I wasn't the one they were looking for. Why, I wasn't even the guarantor for that person. They were knocking at my door day and night. Even my neighbor, Obuna, was getting fed up with them. Sometimes, force is required to calm someone down and get them to listen to what you have to say. <laughs> That's right. Oh, by the way, Burnett, what was it that you wanted to give to Miss Navia again? Oh, oh yes. One moment, I have it right here. Miss Navia, these are some flower seeds that I prepared. Please take them. They're a very good variety, and they'll become very big and beautiful once they bloom. I don't know what we would have done without your help, so this is a little token of our appreciation. I hope you won't refuse. Ah, did you cultivate them yourself? Thank you so much. I'll certainly take them. Malus, we do still have some empty flower pots at home, right? Why, we can have as many pots as you'd like, demoiselle. Perfect. In that case, we'll swap out some of the decorative plants for some of Mrs. Burnett's flowers. Very well. Wait. Something seems to be off here. Excuse me, madam. If I'm not mistaken, your name is Burnett, correct? That's right. Is something wrong? Ah, uh, no, it's nothing. This is the first time we've ever met, but your name seemed familiar to me. I must have heard it when I was discussing things with your husband previously. I've heard this name before. Sometime recently, I'm sure of it. And why are there so few people around here? Where did everyone go? We must mind the time, demoiselle. We still have important things to attend to today. Huh? Uh, we do? Like what? Well, now, did you forget? Miss Navia, here you are! I've been looking for you. Please, come to the Opera House. Your trial is about to begin. My trial? Wait, why would I need to go to the Opera House? Yes, she's right, Demoiselle. It's just about time now, so we should get going. Oh? Uh, all right then. Look, it's Navia! She's here! And her two attendants are with her! <sighs> Goodness, everyone's finally here. There sure are a lot of people here to see the trial. And they all seem to be oddly... excited about something. I even know some of these people. Karina. Desiree. Joyville. Jolien, Essen. 
Why are so many people here? And why do I have no recollection of this case? And as for the judge... Uh, huh? Where's Monsieur Nervillette? Please sit in the defendant's seat. Don't worry, Silver and I shall accompany you. All right. But are you sure you can stand behind me? Typically, it wouldn't be allowed, but today is an exception. Hey, what kind of place do they think this is? Come on, do they have any idea what they're doing? Seriously. <sighs> Enough with the whispering! <sighs> Could someone please tell me where Monsieur Nervillette is? And why I am standing trial? My dear Miss Navia, have you not yet realized what you've done? In that case, allow me to explain. As all here know, you are Master Callus's successor, the head of the Spina di Rasula, someone held in high regard by every soul in Poisson. After you took over the Spina, you treated all of us just like the late Master Callus had. If anyone in need reached out to you for help, you responded. Not only you, but your butler, your subordinates, nearly everyone in the Spina di Rasula fought for the well-being of those in Poisson. <laughs> Wait a moment. Aren't you just proving that I'm a good person? Yes, correct. Absolutely right. And that is why you stand accused. You have helped so many people get through so many difficulties. You are one with us. We are inseparable. We are one big family, all of us who are from Poisson, inextricably linked. And with you being so important, we couldn't possibly do without you. Therefore, this fair and honorable court shall declare you guilty, and you shall stay here. You will be together with us forever. Huh? What are you saying? Uh, everything you have said is correct. I have indeed done a lot for my hometown, and I would be willing to be with you all, but... What is the purpose of having me stand here like this? What is there to discuss? Ah, oh, well, if that's what you think, then I have no further comments. <gasps> How wonderful, Miss Navia! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know all these people. Why are they laughing? <sighs> I seem to remember now. Yes, I get it. This trial is... Wait just a moment. This isn't right! Uh, Malus? What was that, Mr. Malus? Our conclusion is very clear and unanimous. Let the court judge her now. She's guilty! Stay here, Navia! You're one of us! Demoiselle, don't admit guilt. This trial means to keep you here forever. I wish to exercise my right to defend Our Lady. Mr. Swanfield, you only know of Navia's goodness, but nothing of her utterly independent mind. She was born a free and independent spirit. She has never been tied down by anything. Indeed, even the death of Master Callus couldn't stop her. Her actions cannot serve as proof that she identifies herself as part of any group. She merely acted as an individual, extending her hand to help others. Please do not mistake her actions as being otherwise. Really? As an individual, you say? Don't forget, we are all Fontanians here. This is the nation of justice, the nation of Hydro! Even if Miss Navia only voluntarily rendered her assistance, that doesn't change the fact that her beautiful soul must return to everyone. Water accepts all, blends with all. It will surely accept her kindness. Everything is measured here in the nation of Hydro. And in the end, everyone shall meld together. Thus, when a unanimous opinion emerges, that opinion represents justice. Now I speak for everyone. Our opinion is consistent. Navia should stay. We and Navia are one! 
And you would call this justice? Preposterous. You are merely jealous that Demoiselle still has a chance to exist as an individual. Have you forgotten how much you all once longed to become individuals? To become independent? Do you, Do you mean, mean to defy, defy our, our justice? justice? If your justice is flawed, then why should we acknowledge it? As you said, we can also have our own justice. Silver and I shall defend Demoiselle. And that is how we will enforce justice. Ugh, my head... It hurts. Demoiselle. Silver, it hurts. My head is spinning. All I can see is stars swirling in front of me. I remember now. Everything that seemed odd from the very beginning. Karina, Desiree, Joyville, Jolien, Essen. And Mr. Giverny and Mrs. Burnett, who we met earlier. Even Malouse and Silver. I don't want to admit it, but... But they're all dead. Don't be afraid. And don't admit guilt. We will protect you to the very end. Absurd! Who are you to say that she cannot be judged? We are the majority, and in the Nation of Trials, the majority is absolute justice. We are the will of all. Don't let them escape! We shall keep Navia here with us! Mr. Malus and Mr. Silver, must you be so stubborn? How could the two of you possibly hope to stand against the Collective? Do not resist. This judgment is fair and just. Navia belongs to us. After all that happened, she should not be left alone in Poisson. What are you saying? No more excuses! She says we're jealous. Jealous? <laughs> How could she possibly be an independent individual? What's with these people? Who's jealous of her? She belongs to us! Miss Navia... She... Silence. Uh, that's... Uh, Monsieur Nervillette! Such commotion is prohibited in the court. The accusations you just presented are nonsense and cannot constitute a proper trial. The court will adjourn for the rest of the day. In this, I shall hear no objections from any unauthorized party. Our thanks, Monsieur Nervillette. Please leave with me, Miss Navia, while there is still time. But... Go on now, Demoiselle. This is your only chance to leave this place. What, can't bear to leave us behind or something? Malus. <laughs> My apologies. I couldn't resist making one little joke once I realized that... This shall be our last goodbye. Malus... Silver... Quickly! You must come now! Goodbye... Demoiselle. Farewell. No, wait! Just a second! Uh, Navia? <laughs> You're awake. Good. Uh, I must have been dreaming. Malus and Silver were still alive, and they were... They were defending me at some insane trial. It looks like you're all right. Did all the sad feelings cause you to have a nightmare? Paimon could give you a hug? The ruins you were exploring suffered a cave-in. When I arrived, I found you falling toward the water. You were just about to be dissolved within, but I... Hmm... Hmm? What is it? I think I saw two Oceanids protecting you. It was only for a moment, 
perhaps even a fraction of a second, but they gave me the chance to retrieve you. Were it not for their intervention, I would not have been able to rescue you before your consciousness dissipated. Wait! Did you say Oceanids? You mean like what happened with Vache? Perhaps those two Oceanids were the people you saw in your dream. <sighs> I always told them that they didn't have to protect me. <sighs> to think that they'd keep doing so even after death. <sighs> Please come with me. Nevelet, are you okay? Hmm? Oh, I am quite all right. Perhaps there's something we could chat about? Why do you look so stiff all of a sudden? Oh, Paimon knows. You're the type who feels awkward when there's nothing to talk about, right? I merely thought that we should give Navia some time to herself. Then, don't you think it's even more awkward to call us over like this and then have nothing to talk about? Hmm... I suppose so. Ah, Sijuin! I hope all is well with her these days. Her work in the Fortress of Meropede has not been too much for her, has it? No way! Don't worry! She's doing fine down there. She's an amazing head nurse. I see. Well, that is good. I have always worried that Sijuin would need a lot of time to understand the world of humanity, just as I have. Oh, and the Duke also says hi! Even though Sijuin made him do that, he hopes that you haven't been overwhelmed by all that's happened lately. Thank you. I have indeed been busy lately, and I also hope that everything is going well in the Fortress of Meropede. Uh, he still doesn't know what to talk about. I... Uh... Let's chat about something else, then. So, Nivellet, uh, you're probably quite the swimmer, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Uh, this isn't going anywhere. Uh, let's try something else. Um, how did you find these ruins? Did the knave tell you? Yes, in fact. I had arranged to meet you in Poisson, but when I arrived, I discovered that the Fatui were helping the residents evacuate. They had even transported a large quantity of supplies to the area. Amid my astonishment, I ran into the nave, and we had a chat. She informed me that she had asked you to investigate the ancient ruins here. Yeah, we originally planned to meet up with you, but we thought you might still be busy with all those official documents. We didn't think exploring the ruins would take very long, and who would have thought you'd wrap things up so quickly? <sighs> I'm sorry to have kept you all waiting like that. I'm feeling much better now. I guess we should get going again. Will you come with us, Monsieur Nervillette? Yes, if you wouldn't mind my company.
case. Don't blink. We've reached the end. This is the place. There should not be any other hidden spaces in the vicinity. The path sure had some twists and turns, but it turns out that this place isn't actually that big. Stone slates. It seems like they were put here as an offering. Uh, could we take them down and have a look? Uh, perhaps we should just leave them be for now. Hmm. There are four locations in total, but only three stone slates. The slate that should be in the first empty spot is missing. And the surrounding walls also show signs of damage. There's something written below. Let Paimon see. Uh... Reason dictates that this nation be destroyed. I shall record the history of its future here in its past. Uh... Say what? 
It feels like someone left these slates and these words here for a purpose. But does he mean that Fontaine should be destroyed? That would fit the circumstances dictated by the prophecy, yes. Indeed, the slate's contents correspond to it. Take the second slate, for example. There's a person kneeling here. She seems so dedicated. And there's a whole bunch of other people behind her doing the same. She's facing this... Uh... What is this? Some kind of island in the sky? And is that... Lady Farina in the third image? Did the Hydro Archon fall into the water? And... Is that a ring of people around her? Paimon doesn't quite get it. Are they all in the water? The fourth image... I know this one. This exactly matches the content of the prophecy. The people will all be dissolved into the waters. And only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Hmm. More information should be hidden in these slates, but I fear I cannot easily uncover it, most likely due to us missing the first slate. I am very sorry. Don't blame yourself, Monsieur Nervalet. Deciphering ancient stone slates isn't one of your duties. Ooh, Paimon's getting the chills just looking at these slates. This says that it's the history of the future, right? That means the prophecy's sure to come true. Uh, I really hope it doesn't mean that. Still, Paimon feels like these images are kind of weird when you look at them together. Huh. Hmm... That's right! If the images are in chronological order, shouldn't the fourth, the waters drowning Fontaine, come before the third? Where the Hydro Archon herself falls into the water? And yet the order is reversed here. If we go by timing, Lady Farina only emerges in the third image. That means that the person in the second image might be the previous Hydro Archon. Egeria, then. I had never met her, but her appearance here does match the records. The previous Archon kneeling before the floating island in the skies, as if confessing a sin. Did she herself commit that sin? And if not, why would she be in such a posture? Also, I'm still wondering why these ancient stone slates are here at all. Judging from their contents... Could this place be the origin of the prophecy? <laughs> Does that mean that someone, or some people, once saw these slates? But who would have created these slates and left these words here? Hmm. <laughs> It seems that any further clues will have to come from Farina. In that case, there's no time to lose. There's nothing else to be gained here, so let's head back first. Yeah, we better get somewhere safe for now.
Let's split up here. I'm going to check on what's happening with the Spina. You know how it is. There's some things you just need to be there for yourself. You still have energy for that, Navia? Paimon's already beat! <sighs> just head back to the Fluvsandra and have a rest then. Thanks for keeping me company all this time. I'll depart as well. Thanks for your hard work today. Rest well, everyone. Traveler, I will go talk to Farina tomorrow morning to ask about the stone slates. I'm sure that you're concerned about this matter as well. If you have time, drop by my office. I will share the results of our discussion with you. Are you really going to talk to her about this directly? Will that be a problem? Ugh, Paimon's getting a little scared now that it's come to this. She has long been harboring secrets and will not give them up easily. Which makes it all the more my duty to ensure that she understands the present situation. Alright, we'll leave it in your hands then. You're probably the best person to talk to her anyway. I will be carefully considering my words tonight. Traveler, Paimon, our safe house at the Fluvsandra is always open to you as ever. So please don't think you're an imposition. <sighs> Alright, I'll be on my way then. Welcome back. We've got a special menu prepared for you two tonight. Yay! And there's good food too! Navi- uh, No, the boss is the best! <laughs> Ooh, desserts! Nice, these are all Paimons! <sighs> Paimons already starting to forget what happened today. Oh, that voice. Is that who I think it is? Huh? It's you two! What are you doing in Fontaine? Mona? Seriously? Nobody just uses a scry glass whenever they've got time to just see who they'll meet on the road. Still, we didn't expect to see you here! Uh, wait, you're not a Fontanian, are you, Mona? Well, I have some business to attend to here, so I booked a hotel in the city. I was just out for a stroll when I bumped into you. Quite unexpectedly, if I might add. Why did you think I was from Fontaine, though? Is that because Magistus doesn't sound much like a mom's daughter's surname? Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Well, I used to have my own surname, which was, well, some other thing. Either way, the old hag told me when she took me as her disciple that the first step to being a great astrologist's pupil was to change that name. There was nothing for it, really. She really is amazing at astrology, so I changed my name to what it is now according to her wishes. To my surprise, however, Magistus is not the name of some ancient house or clan. Uh, it isn't? Nope. Although it is used by us in place of surnames, it generally just means great. Wow! Imagine including a boast in your name. Wait, are you gonna have to put that into your genealogy as well? I reckon so. In any case, I'd give my disciple a name like this as well, if I were to take one. Astromancer Barbaloth Trismegistus. Whoa, that's a long one. Does it also mean great or something? My name means Mona the Great Astrologist. As for the old hag, hers is, in plain speech, the thrice as great scholar of the stars. Just take it as a title specific to astrologists. Thrice as great? That's so... petty. I know, right? <sighs> That's just how she is. 
She used to call herself Magistus, actually, but once she took me in, she changed her name to Triss Magistus. Talk about excessive. Magistus is thus the calling card of our school, so to speak, which makes it about the same as a surname. It's all right if you don't get it. You can look into it further should you need to study astrology more deeply. I was born in Mondstadt, yes. My parents migrated to Dorman Port, and I traveled with the old hag for a while, after which I settled down in Mondstadt City. Oh, that's a good thing then. At least we know you won't be dissolved by Fontaine's waters. Hmm, speaking of that, I'm sure you're aware that a bunch of things have happened here in Fontaine, right? I know you're not a local, but I'd avoid getting too close to any water that looks strange all the same. There's something ominous about it. Well, the water, I mean. That was the main reason, yes. Just a while back, the Steambird invited me to take part in a panel and speak about the circulation of the prophecy as an astrologist. The invitation was sent quite early on. I don't think anyone expected Fontaine to be in this much trouble. What do you make of that prophecy, Mona? Just tell us what you think as an astrologist. Your word would go a long way to make things more certain and less... scary. What I can tell you is that I'm an astrologist. And that this prophecy concerns the fate of Fontaine. Even that of all Tevat. Ascertaining this is akin to reading the fortune of the whole world. I'm afraid that this is not something that just anyone can do. If I could do it, you would no longer call me an astrologist. But a visionary. But on the flip side, the prophecy is so huge and powerful that it must surely come from a powerful visionary. Its contents involve the fate of the world. Disregarding it would be a mistake. A visionary? Sounds really powerful and all, but does such a person really exist? Of course. The old hag could do it. And I'd bet there are others amongst those Hex and Zerkel colleagues of hers who could do something similar. Uh, are you sure? Hmm... All right, I'll help you. It isn't often that I see you with such a serious look on your face. I'll tell you once I hear back from her. Thanks, Mona! You're amazing as always! Oh, well, this is something only I can do after all. So yes, your praises are quite welcome. That's the greatest of astrologists for you! Of all the people we know, you know the stars the best! Indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's the spirit. Oh, sorry. I came to see what all the commotion was about. If there's anything you need, do not hesitate to inform the Spina di Rosula. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Guess we were getting a little too carried away there. Well, I'll go tend to my own business now. If I receive any news, I'll be sure to come find you two again. And there she goes, quick as rushing water. And here we are with the Spina guy giving us suspicious looks. <sighs> if Paimon hadn't spoken for you, it'd be you getting all the weird looks! Huh! The things Paimon does for you! Hmm, <laughs> that's more like it! Feeling kind of sleepy. <sighs> but it's time to get up, Traveler. We agreed to go see Nevelet, so let's pack it up and get going.
you're here! Finally! Uh, is something wrong? Monsieur Durvelette and Lady Farina, they, they seem to have gotten into a dispute! Please go see for yourself! Like I said, I've already explained everything! And yet the problem has not been properly solved. There is little space for excuses between us. It is not my intention to offend you, but please, tell me where you stand. You are the Hydro Archon Fosalor, are you not? Look at this. This is a list of the victims from the recent Poisson incident. <laughs> We did not arrive in time to avert this disaster, and I will not have it happen again. <clears throat> I will say this once more. You must tell me everything you know. Yesterday, I found three stone slates in some ancient ruins near Poisson. Do you know anything about those? Seriously? You're questioning me like this is a court case now. I don't know anything about that. But... You found them in some ancient ruins, you say? That's correct, which is why I came to ask you some questions. There should have been four slates, but one of them was missing. The other three featured different images that seemed to correlate to the prophecy. <laughs> the prophecy? The second of these slates depicts the previous Hydro Archon Egeria kneeling before a floating island in the sky, as if confessing something. Do you know nothing of this either? I don't! I've never seen such slates! I'll ask you again. Do you really have no information regarding the previous Archon? My deciphering of the slates indicates that the Hydro Archon Egeria once had to confess to, or apologize for, a certain sin. If anyone would know about it, it should be you. All gods don't have the same secrets, you know. She was herself and I'm me. Is it really so strange that I know nothing? I understand your concerns, but... I'm sorry. I just don't have anything to tell you. <sighs> Forgive me for saying this now, Lady Farina, but I have long known of your various secret investigations into certain matters. There are several indications that you have been investigating the prophecy on the sly. This is not strange in itself, considering that you are the Hydro Archon. But it is strange that you should also claim to not know any of Egeria's secrets, as well as do nothing following your inquiries. You have never been as superficial as you have presented yourself to be, nor are you a fool. And yet, your behavior is very inconsistent. <laughs> oh, so you've been watching me all this time, have you? I didn't think you were that type. You... Well, since you know about my secret investigations, then you should know I'm actually working to take care of it. There's no point questioning or suspecting me. You're the Eudix, but you're still my subordinate. You should be following my lead. Just trust in me, your Archon, and do as I say. Never mind whether you can truly convince yourself to or not, it'll all turn out fine. That's all I have to say. We do not discuss this matter again. Oh, <laughs> the opera's about to start. Toodles! <sighs> Did Farina not notice us standing by the door? Wonder what's up with her. She was smiling. Huh. She didn't seem in the mood to care if we were listening in or not. I assume you've been outside for a while now? Oh! You noticed! Seems Farina didn't even realize we were here. She was in a great panic, though I cannot discern the reason. Our discussion reached impasses time and again, a state of affairs that we cannot allow to continue. Still, I do not understand. Dialogue is the basis for understanding, so why did she keep refusing to engage?
Everyone in her inner circle has noticed that she is hiding some secret. The issue is her attitude. I fear that she will not reveal anything unless absolutely forced to. We may have to create a situation in which she will have no choice but to speak. Oh? Like what? Normally, people will only reveal the truth when standing trial. Perhaps we must have the Hydro Archon experience just such a scenario. But Farina's seen so many trials, and she's really good at dodging questions. How do we make sure that she won't just slip away at the first chance she gets? We will need to consider this thoroughly, join forces with various parties, and then do what we can. <sighs> if at all possible, I would prefer to recuse myself from this affair, but we must prevent the prophecy from coming to pass. This may be cruel to her, but all Fontaine is in crisis. The information a god possesses is too precious, and so we must take a chance on this. Hmm, but who will lend us their aid to do such a thing? Everyone, huh? Speaking of which, it was pretty smart of you to think of hiding here. Poisson was just involved in a disaster, so it's presently devoid of people. That naturally makes it the best choice. And here you are, drinking tea like it's the most natural thing in the world, huh? That's what family should do. Sit and enjoy a leisurely time together. <laughs> it's nice to enjoy tea here, you know? Care for a cup? Ahem. <clears throat> Lend me your ears, everyone. Hmm. Or perhaps one of you might like to start us off. How about you, friend? Uh, me? No, I don't think I can. Hmm. Uh, then, how about you, good sir? I fear that I will cause the mood on this boat to become as somber as it is in court. Well then, I guess we're lucky we've got a local like me to organize things. Wonderful, the spotlight at last. I guess I'll be facilitating things from here. That was a little long-winded, don't you think? Oh, <laughs> you might be right. Anyway, to cut to the chase, our friend here, the Traveler, has brought us together to discuss something. As for what that is, well... Uh, let's start by saying that we'll be pooling our efforts together to create a series of traps. Oh, how intriguing. Well, it's just an expression, really. One that I just learned from Glorand. And use on the spot. So, let's invite her to explain in detail. A round of applause, please. Huh? Didn't you say that you would be facilitating this? Oh, come now. Your work doesn't involve much public speaking, right? This is a good chance to practice. You might even pick up some fancy oratory tricks to impress your boss with in the future. <laughs> I see. And what does my boss say? Hmm. <laughs> he is glad that you consider him your boss. Do go on. In that case, <clears throat> do any of you have experience hunting? Not that I recall. Fremenet and I once used a wooden stick in a basket to catch wild rabbits when we were younger. As for Lynette, um... Oh, right. You were sick that day, weren't you? Uh, I've also gone diving to catch some fish before. Does that count? Uh, I'm afraid not. You may or may not have heard, but Fontaine once played host to a group known as the Marachaussee Hunters. Though that was their name, they did not hunt animals. 
but rather various monsters left behind by the ancient dynasty of King Remus. Today, Fontaine's monster population has already thinned greatly, so the hunters have blended back into society, taking up arms in other lines of work. They even left a unique methodology of hunting in their wake. A trap comprises of the following components, bait, a trigger, and a containment device. Sometimes a lethal implement will also be necessary to deal with the prey. So, if we were to build a trap together, right now, what would you choose to build it with? For me, I would prefer something basket-shaped. Pigeons and rabbits will see the bait and naturally enter the snare. Our line of work requires a deft hand, and we're some of the best in the industry, so you can count on our techniques. You use some of those techniques while moving the people of Poisson, didn't you? My subordinates mentioned that you even performed some magic for the bawling children. Yes, and I even managed to gather some intelligence in the meantime. I'm quite the multitasker if I do say so myself. I'm afraid I can't claim that as my strong suit. I prefer more stable methods, like placing bait in the water and waiting for the fish to come within reach. That's the kind of method I would count on. <laughs> Calm and steady. Exactly the kind of person who would catch loads of fish. And I can be their assistant. With discretion, I'm sure. Hmm. I'd probably use some sort of mechanical animal. Papa once bought me some small clockwork squirrels, mice, and such. When placed in the forest, they can attract others of their kind. I remember that you liked those too, didn't you? I did. And that would be a good way to go about it. If they're realistic enough, animals of the same kind will follow them all the way to the trap. What about you, Monsieur Nevelet? I fear I do not have any related experience. Hmm. That makes sense. You usually solve problems directly, without the use of any such tricks. But I do have one more question for you, Monsieur. If we were to create a trap now, how would you design it? Hmm. I would like for it to be effective, but bring no harm to the prey. A more gentle trap would be ideal. Hmm. Kind, as always. However, our intention doesn't necessarily change the containment device and the type of implement we need. If we wanted to kill the prey in one strike, we would need a powerful implement. However, that also goes for prey that must be captured and safely contained. Wait, why is that? Only a hunter who's a true expert at subduing their prey can snare it without harming it. The line that divides life and death is often exceedingly thin. Uh, so are we going hunting together? Huh. We hadn't thought of seeing ourselves as hunters. It kinda works, but maybe it's still not the best metaphor. If our means of capturing and dealing with our prey is to put them on trial, then the hunting metaphor is actually quite accurate. But we shall require much more courage than any hunter to judge a god, a being whose seat is an exalted throne. Oh, so that's what's going on. Sounds very interesting.
the law, you need to know how it works. <sighs> it's been a tough few days, hasn't it? So much has been happening. <sighs> Hyman didn't think the meetings would go on for so long, but everyone seemed pretty fired up, huh? Paimon thought they'd be at least a little frightened. Well, Fremine was, now that Paimon thinks about it, but everyone else just looked a little surprised. Uh, well... It's hard to say. Paimon doesn't have any experience with this sort of thing. But with you around, Paimon sure will do great. After all, you're the most reliable person in the world, aren't you? <laughs> uh, huh? Uh... Did you just pour some tea? Paimon didn't notice you doing that at all! Then what's that? Paimon's never seen that cup before! Don't be frightened. I'm just joining you two for tea. I merely refrained from saying anything till now. <gasps> Who's that voice? Uh, but there's no one here! Ah, have you forgotten me already? Wait. You are familiar. You're the voice we heard from the sky in Sumeru. Hmm. <laughs> the voice from the sky, hmm? I fear that description is wrong. Though, not completely wrong. Huh. <sighs> You're feeling lost now. Just as you were feeling previously. I sensed that confusion and thus came to you. Guiding people is an irresistible hobby of mine, after all. Consider me a passerby, just accepting a commission from my friend's disciple on a whim. The prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. What? Th then is there any way we can stop? I believe you have witnessed a failed attempt with your own eyes. Can everything in Tevat so easily be changed? Ah, so you've caught on. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Are the things that you shall see different from the fate that the gods perceive? Well, what is she talking about? It all sounds really impressive and important and stuff, but... It also sounds kind of scary. I believe that you understand, right? Some things are insignificant. But others, you must reach out to change. Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Hmm, this was good tea, by the way. Thank you for your hospitality. Well, that'll be all for today. The voice... it's gone! Someone talking. Oh, all right, all right, coming. Hey, it's you who's getting lazy, okay? Well, I see I've walked in on some lively banter. Luna! Fine, just fine. I went to take part in that Steambird panel. It turned out to be more interesting than I expected. Not all Fontanians are pessimistic about this. One journalist mentioned that sitting around and waiting for the end to come would be wrong, and that they should make their own rescue preparations. I agreed, so we had a brief chat with her. Uh, did she have pink hair by any chance? Why yes, it was Charlotte. You remember her, right? That daredevil journalist. 
I'm in full support of her view. Prophecies are very important, but how can people allow their lives to be commandeered by just a few words? That's right! Paimon's glad to hear something sensible for once. Ah, yes. About what we had discussed before. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't reach the old hag. I'll try again tonight, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. Huh? Goodness gracious! Are you serious? She said that even the god's gaze has blind spots. Pretty bold if you ask Paimon. Most people would believe the gods to be all-knowing, right? The Hexen Circle members are certainly anything but ordinary. As for the mage named N, the old hag has mentioned her a few times. She said that N's sense of direction is incredible, and that she loves guiding those who are lost. But I've never met her, and if she were still alive, she'd be... <laughs> well, suffice it to say that the hag's at least a few hundred now, and N's been around for longer than that. Whoa. The Hexen Zirkle sounds like a scary group. But they must really stay in shape to live so long. Their abilities alone are pretty terrifying. If she came to see you personally, then the problem you're facing must truly be of great importance. Well, it's not like Paimon could understand anything she said. Yes, she was quite cryptic, but I suspect she means that there is still a way to turn things around. She didn't say when or what that would be, though, so... Perhaps it is something that you cannot know right now. Traveler? Paimon? Are you two alright? Oh, we're fine. We're just a little down right now. It kind of feels like the end is coming, you know? I see. I feel that same sense of desperation, too. I guess you could consider me someone who has often witnessed fate. So far as I have seen, it cannot be swayed. But even so, I still hope for, and believe in, miracles. Astrology is eternal and rational, but fate may not be. It is cruel, but it can also be beautiful. Perhaps that's what N was trying to tell you. Not to lose heart, and to believe that what you are seeing playing out before you is not yet set in stone. I did originally think of steering clear of all this, but I couldn't. Even if this is all futile, I still wish to help everyone. If we don't struggle to the last, then how can we face the end when it comes? Huh. You do have a point. <laughs> there I go, talking about astrological principles again. <laughs> Sorry about that. The moment I start talking about work-related stuff... I oh! I need to get going! It was worth trying to comfort you, even if only a little. I believe that you'll help those who are struggling in the same way I did. 